So thank you also to Nadja for presenting the key findings of this year's Mobile Gender Gap Report. Now this data is absolutely vital to inform gender inclusive action from policymakers, operators and other key stakeholders. And we've just heard progress towards closing the mobile gender gap has stalled uh, for the second year in a row. Now, this shows that we cannot take progress for granted and we must act quickly to get ourselves back on track. We know when women have access to mobile phones and the internet, they are unstoppable. But in low and middle income countries, there are still over 300 million fewer women than men using mobile internet. If we want to have a fighting chance at achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030, we absolutely cannot afford to leave women behind. And I must say, I'm very proud of the work our operators are doing to drive women's digital and financial inclusion. Through our Connected Women Commitment Initiative, over 40 mobile operators have made formal commitments uh, to reach women with mobile internet and mobile money services. Since 2016, they have reached over 65 million additional women. So you can see how acting together, acting decisively, can bring about fantastic results. And I think together is the key word here. This is not just women's issue uh, or an issue for mobile operators. Achieving digital gender equality is a global issue that affects us all. That's why I'm proud that the GSMA also works with and supports governments uh, to address the mobile gender gap sharing our expertise and data, and through our revamped capacity building courses for policymakers. The challenge that lies ahead is a big one, too big for any organization to solve on its own. But I know that by working together, we can achieve our shared goals of digital gender equality. So with that, I would like to introduce another great advocate for closing the mobile gender gap, the Secretary General of the ITU, Mrs. Doreen Bogdan Martin, who has been an excellent leader and a key partner in tackling the digital gender divide. So, Doreen, thank you very much for being here. We are just so delighted to have you back again to discuss this year's Mobile Gender Gap reporting findings. Now, this year, as Secretary General of the ITU, so first, a big congratulations on, on that very important role. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Matt. Yeah, I, I, I would like to hear your reaction on this year's findings. Is there anything specific that surprises you? Um, well, let me let me start, Matt. Uh, first of all, thank you, and, and great uh, great to be here. And I want to congratulate you, Matt, and of course your your whole team for another, I think, um, great report. I always look forward to this report uh, and really welcome and appreciate the the careful. Uh, data analysis that goes into uh, making the report. Um, I think it, it helps us at the ITU and practitioners around the globe to be better equipped in terms of, of designing more effective interventions to close the digital gender gap. Um, I mean, I think in terms of, of the findings, um, my reaction would be a bit mixed, I think. Um, the report offers some reasons to be hopeful. Uh, and I think at the same time um, also um, gives us some concern, I would, uh, I would say. The one that, that jumped out at me right away is that uh, the gender gap in mobile Internet use remains relatively unchanged. And, of course, this is consistent with, um, with our own, uh, own data um, that looks at overall Internet use for, for women and men uh, globally. Um, I think on the positive side, Matt, we see the parity score slightly, um, slightly up. Uh, so I guess that's positive. But that score only gives us a partial picture. Um, mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, that gap has actually increased, as you're, you're finding, Joe, by some, some 20 million over the last year. Um, so I think that's, that's concerning. Also, the finding um, about adoption rates slowing, uh, of course, is also a reason, uh, a reason for concern. Uh, we yeah. saw adoption go up during the pandemic, and now we're back to kind of pre 
pandemic adoption yeah. rates. And then, and then the last point, um, Matt's in terms of the smartphone ownership, yeah. um, you know, that stagnation, I think, is, 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 is a concern uh, for, for both GSMA, ITU, and I think uh, women around, around the globe. Yeah. No, I, I, I think that's very well put. I mean, it is certainly not the time to be complacent. We, I think we can uh, agree Absolutely. on that. Absolutely. Uh, mm. So, so fr from your vantage point, what do you see as the main drivers of this slowdown of, of mobile internet adoption? And, and uh, as we all know how important that is to get uh, people on internet, what is the main reasons, as you see? What's the reason for this slowdown? And, and, and how should we refocus our efforts to, to try to overcome those barriers? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. And I do think um, I do think we have to refocus. We have to to double down because I don't think the problem, uh, this gap is going to disappear magically. It needs mm. uh, very, very focused interventions. And in terms of, of the barriers uh, that, that we see and that you have uh, also seen, um, the cost issue, so the affordability, uh, a lot of that having to do as well with uh, with the cost of handsets. Um, I think the literacy piece is also a big one. So that lack of digital skills, digital literacy is keeping women and girls offline. I think also the rise in um, online safety and security concerns is also a big um, a big barrier to get um, to get women online. Um, I, I think we have to also focus on least developed countries, again, where all of those barriers are, um, uh, are, are, are very present. We only have three in 10 women using the Internet in those um, LDCs. And if we can tackle the barriers, I think uh, women um, in low and middle income countries have the most to, to gain. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, we often talk about meaningful connectivity, uh, and I think that's where we have to be. We have to be focusing. So it's not just getting the connection there. Uh, and as you have uh, cited many times, we we've done well on mobile coverage, but now we need to do better in terms of of bridging that that usage gap and, and making sure that the connectivity gets to those that need it, that they have the content, that they have the the local languages, that they have the services that can benefit um, benefit their lives. Yeah, so uh, it's it's a daunting task for for everyone. I don't think there's one organization that can sort of solve this. So we need to really work together as as partners, both uh, you know private sector, but public sectors, the governments, regulators, operators, etc. So it is a a monumental task, but it is as you rightly said, so important to drive that forward. Now, if you could sort of prioritize one thing that we should as, as collectively focus on this coming year. We have you spoken about the different barriers, but also regions. Should we look at the, the least developed countries or mid or, or, or a specific region? What, what would you highlight? Where do you think we should really focus our efforts? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think we have to be focused on on the least developed countries, the landlocked developing countries, the small mm -hmm. island developing states and places where women and girls are digitally excluded mm -hmm. and by them access to that connectivity, giving them the devices that they need. Um, I think so many things can can happen, Mats. And, you know, we've worked together um, in partnership on, on many fronts. I think um, the commitments that we have seen around our partner to connect. Absolutely. Uh, I think that gives us a lot of hope with many commitments yep. on the digital gender gap. Of yep. course, our work on on equals as well uh, to focus on on the access, on the skills and on the yep. leadership pieces. And I also think when it comes to education, that that's, that's a big one, investing in women and girls' education and the work that we have done with UNICEF uh, to bring connectivity to schools and bring opportunities to, to young girls. Mm. 
Yeah, no, that, that's excellent word. Thank you so much, Doreen, for your valuable insights. And I think, you know, working together as true partners is is absolutely the way to go forward, as you rightly said. Now, I, I hope that everyone that, that listens in uh, can reflect a bit on, uh, you know, what we all can do with our respective organizations to enable women and their families to reap the full benefits of connectivity. So, so thank you again, Doreen, for being with us and, and uh, for your support and all your leadership and, and hard work in, in trying to bridge the, the digital divide. So thank you very much. And uh, back to you, Isabel. Thank you, Matt.